Ah, uh, what's better than a day driving through the mountains, smelling the flowers and the fresh air? Well, going into a dark underwater cave with no air and death. There's this sign with the skeleton telling you if you go any further you'll die, but I'm not a fool. I know that skeletons guard treasure. The best thing to do would be to keep going. Good morning. It's not clickbait if we actually find some treasure, right? I'm about a week into my van life travel-a-thon at the time of filming this. So far it's all been pretty great. Gas is cheap on the east coast and the weather has been a bit warm, but it's still enjoyable. Though I haven't gotten into a good workflow schedule yet, I'm still working on that. So I've got to make some breakfast, or rather brunch or lunch at this point. So let's fire up that stove and get cooking. A key point when you're camping in an RV or van or even in an apartment is that small spaces get cluttered really fast. It's important to keep things tidy and clean and do it as frequently as you can. We're driving through Chattanooga today, and throughout the state there's tons of things to see and do, like national parks, mountains, waterfalls, death caves, historic sites, coffee shops, you name it. There's some beautiful national parks and some hiking trails. Let's take a look at some of those death caves that I mentioned. Ruby Falls Caves features uh, many of the more well-known types of the cave formations. You know, the stalactites and stalagmites, flowstone, and things like that. The falls come out of the side of the cliff from an underground stream, and that's over a thousand feet underground too in some areas. There's also some people that have this quirk in their brain area that makes them not only want to explore tiny little caves, but also explore these caves underwater. Lucky for them, there's lots of underwater tunnels around the area. I'm not exactly claustrophobic, but something about the underwater caves is particularly unnerving. If I recall, there was also that movie in 2011 called Sanctum. This was where the team of cave divers go into the giant tunnels of Papua New Guinea. And, like you would expect of a disaster survival movie, there are in fact disasters, and they do in fact have to survive. They accomplish this task to varying degrees of success. And that has further cemented my undesire to perform similar activities. There are these famous signs that they put up at the entrance to these caves. You may have seen a picture of them before. It's a picture of the Grim Reaper saying if you go any further you have like a 90% chance of experiencing death or death related symptoms. He then goes on to tell you that there's really nothing in these caves worth dying for, but we all know from playing video games that skeletons always guard treasure. My professional medical recommendation is if you see these signs is to keep swimming, you are almost at the treasure. Speaking of things that creeped me out, there was that one famous diver who dove into what's known as a blue hole, which is a giant underwater sinkhole. Like going into the ultra deep end of the pool, a deep end that's a thousand feet deep, at night, with no lights and monsters. Anyway, this dude saw all the other guys playing guitar, and he's like, Nah, that's overdone. I know what will impress girls. Hold my beer and watch this. I think a big part of the creepiness of the deep water is not being able to see anything, either because it's too murky or the light just doesn't reach down that far. The ocean can be creepy. Although, as a kid, I was also afraid of the lights in the swimming pool. Don't ask why, I don't really know. This whole ocean stuff is one of the main reasons I decided on traveling around in a van instead of one of the probably more romantic alternatives of sailing around in a boat. Though as a younger kid I was actually into boats. I even had a boating license actually. One pretty common phobia is called submechanophobia, which is the fear of partial or fully submerged man-made objects. It sounds crazy, but check this out. These last two are particularly creepy to me. Alright, let's come up for some air. Now that we've dried off, we can get back to the nice, beautiful soil. 
or rather asphalt, because we're driving. My destination is now Whitefish, Tennessee. I've got some family that lives around there, and I haven't seen them in a while, so that'd be a great stop for my around-the-world tour, if you consider North America to be the world. I dig it when you get off the highway and head into these smaller towns. The roads get smaller and more curvy. It probably makes for a better video, too. Though at this point in my journey, I still haven't figured out how to set up the camera very well and take good shots. Bear with me, because the future is right around the corner. You know, with all that unnerving underwater cave stuff, exposure therapy is probably the best. The more I look at the creepy submechanophobia pics, the, the less it affects me. And I guess this is true for most phobias. It's not that you become less scared of the scenario or the object, it's that you realize that you're not as weak as you think. Life doesn't become less scary, you become stronger. When Atlas begged Zeus for mercy, he did not ask the king of Olympus to lighten the weight of the world. He asked him to make his shoulders broader to be able to carry the heavy world better. Ask not for a lighter burden, but for broader shoulders. So, after all that, what treasure did we find? Well, in the end, the treasure was our friendship all along. Join me next video where we learn how to make a nuclear bomb in the van.